Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be going over the five things that I don't exactly like about the new Mazda CX-50. Before we get into the video though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So the first thing is the tires. So first off, before we talk about the tires, you guys need to know that the CX-50 is supposed to be Mazda's like off-roader. And this has... 20 inch wheels and the tires if you're wondering for the setup 245 45 20 so we have like no sidewall really big wheels that's not an off-roader setup whatsoever and so i think that well first off we have brake calipers and rotors that are small enough that you could throw an 18 inch wheel on this and they should put more aggressive tires on it especially with like the whole marketing thing where we've got these aggressive fender flares and we've got like eight point something inches 8.3 inches of ground clearance and so yeah Better tires, Mazda. Better wheels, too. And number two is the cruise control setup. So this has adaptive cruise control, as you can see right here. And notice it has this like lane centering system. Yeah, it doesn't really work all that well. Um, it's not one of those systems where you can just like put your hand here and just let it do everything for you. It seems kind of wonky and basically, I found myself not even using adaptive cruise control because I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna drive myself. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I, there is, you know, some improvement that can be done with this system. Number three is the key fob. Now here is the key fob for the CX-50, and this is just Mazda's key fob. And it actually doesn't look all that bad. It has some nice trim on it, uh, but I have a couple complaints. So first off, the buttons are absolutely tiny, and so you can imagine in the dark, you can't really tell what you're pressing. So I think that's a little bit of a downside. Bigger buttons would be nice. And also it's very like hollow and like light feeling, which would be fine if Mazda was trying to sell this as like a cheap economy car, but Mazda's trying to market their vehicles as like, inexpensive luxury and so i think that they should basically make their key fob slightly heavier so that it feels just like a more substantial item to kind of fit the market that they're trying to enter with their vehicles number four is the infotainment system now this one's going to be controversial with mazda i can tell you that right now <laughs> and so starting things up you guys can see here at the infotainment screen yes we understand it's not a touch screen and it's just super frustrating to me. You can stop beeping now. It's super frustrating because like, it, it takes forever, like, okay, look at this, entertainment, and then I have to press again, and then I have to scroll down to here, and then I can finally change the radio station. Like, too many steps. It'd be so much nicer if it was a touchscreen. Mazda used to have touchscreens, but now they say that this is safer. What they should do is just give us both options. Move this screen forward, so that we can actually reach it and then make it a touchscreen and then keep this dial system here. So if someone wants to use the dial, they can use the dial. If they want to use a touchscreen, they can use the touchscreen. Now, number five is the price. So this is a loaded up Mazda CX-50 and so it stickers for about $44,000 roughly. And you know, that's actually a pretty good value for everything you're getting here with the CX-50. However, Mazda also still sells the CX-5, which has pretty much all the same features. Yes, it looks a little bit different. And yes, it is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same for the most part and fully loaded it's less than forty thousand dollars and so i don't understand where the extra money is coming from other than like the fact that this is a new car and the cx5 isn't exactly new so i, I think that the pricing should be like closer between both the vehicles since they're so similar in terms of size and features and, lo and looks frankly right like to the untrained eye a lot of people might not even be able to tell the difference so yeah that's gonna sum things up with our video talking about the five things I don't exactly like about the Mazda CX-50. With that being said, I'll see all of you in that next video.